Folks, how are we going? I had a lot of inquiries about orchids because you saw one little orchid I have at the, on the side of my house which is about to burst out into flower and I've basically ignored that one. It's getting plenty of morning sunlight so it's warming up the bulbs and now at this time of the year they should be flowering uh, or if not already pushing up some spikes to flower for you. Now I've also got a couple here that are completely pot bound and the question's been posed to me, what do you do with an orchid? How do you transplant an orchid? Well, you know, I'm, I'm, pretty, I'm pretty rough with my orchids, as you can tell here. These are a couple that I've ignored for a while. But I'm going to show you how to transplant and take out some of the back bulbs, which are these dry bulbs. Well, not quite dry, but these ones here are heading out to that direction, which means they're not going to produce anything, but they're great for airflow. So they get a bit of airflow back into the roots, and they need good drainage. So orchids don't like to be in wet feet or have wet feet but they do need to have a tight space as well. So what we need in this case here is orchid bark, good quality orchid bark. Now this one here is from Grow Better. That's the brand I, I found at the moment to use and it's a good size. You get different sizes. You can get a larger grade as well. I find the larger the piece, the more unstable the orchid becomes whilst it's trying to settle into the, into the pot. Then you also need, so I like the smaller piece. So you also need some blood and bone, black grit. Now I'm using our CGWS here. In, uh, look, what, look what it does, look at that, it sticks to your fingers. It's harmless, it's safe to use, it's actually used for makeup too. I suppose some of you ladies will know all about this stuff, kaolin or kaolin powder. Put it on your face, it makes it nice and smooth. Anyway, what I'm going to use this is to dab the ends of the roots where I cut off and also a liquid fertiliser at the end once we repot it. Now, oh, and some wood ash or pot ash if you have, so we can induce some flowering. Need some sec um, scissors and a pair of secateurs, and probably a Stanley knife or a, a knife of some sort that you can cut through this pot. Because I dare say, yep, it's not going to come out. Look at that pot bound at the bottom. So we're going to stab into here and cut this pot off. All right, let's expose it. Good healthy roots on an orchid, the finger-like roots, need to be clean, white, almost white. Soggy roots means a very sad looking orchid. That's what we've got here, look at that. It's really moist at the bottom there. Now this is pop bound. Yeah, we know orchids like to be pop bound. If you don't know that, well they do. Now we're gonna cut into the middle of this and we're gonna divide it, two, maybe three, probably four. But what I did notice, and you shouldn't be, and can I come up to me for a second? For all those of you who are saying, what's he doing with his orchid now? This is the wrong time to do it. Yeah, I know that. It's not the right time because it should be flowering and pushing up new spikes. And that's what this one here is doing. But I am going to, this is our sacrificial orchid here, if you want to call it that, that we're going to use to demonstrate. But I'm also going to show you, look at this. We've got a spike coming up there. Now we probably lose these spikes and there's a spike coming up here as well. See there, there's one there. And there's another one here, three spikes. You know, this is lived on neglect. So, but to make it work, and let's see if it flowers. We'll put it aside and we'll monitor it. I'm not going anywhere, and I don't think any of you are either. So we can come back in a week or two or a month later and see if the spikes have continued to flower. So the best time to do it is after they finish flowering. You just basically cut the flower off, the spike off once it dies back. And then you have a look at it and you say, okay, can I divide it now? Do I need to divide it? And the idea to work out when you need to divide it is when it starts to look like this, like the pot's really, really small and these orchids are really, really spilling over. It's got the mushroom effect going on. So there's a clump there that I need to take apart. Now I'm going to cut into this. Did I bring a knife? This is the only knife I got. Okay. Yeah, I'm going to cut into it like that. That's right. Can I see what's going on? There we are. You can see the division. Where are we? Yeah, it's there. All right, so we're going to cut into that so we don't pull it apart completely. I didn't bring a big enough knife here, folks. So I'm just going to be careful how hard I pull it apart without breaking it away from its own roots. the grass out of here. Now what we need to do is clean them up, not just pull them apart, clean them up a bit. And my, my method is obviously to tip prune all these off, the die back on them. Now you, another thing you'll notice on orchids from wet feet, and you see how I'm cutting it on a slight angle? That's the better way to do it. Just cut them off on a slight angle and if you've got any browning off on the tips like that, just take it off streaking along the leaves. See that sort of streaking there? 
Now, it hasn't progressed too far down. If you notice streaking along the, the depth of your leaves, really deep down below, I think that was, no, that wasn't a caterpillar, down into here, that's a virus, and that's caused from excessive moisture. Now, yeah, these are a little bit wet, but they're only a little bit wet at the tips here. See this sogginess there? All that's dead roots. So we just basically cut them off. Like that. Now, ideally, after that, let me get this out of the way. I've made a big mess here, haven't I? I was going to use this cardboard box, but you know how I am. I fly by the seat of my pants. Let me get this bucket. I've got a bucket of water ready. Did one thing right. Soak them in some water. And clean off all the old bark and soil in there. Now I've seen orchids grown in soil, which everyone says is a no-no. But you know, if you're successful with doing it that way, don't listen to me. Do it your own way. If you don't like what I'm doing, <laughs> definitely don't listen to me. Here we are. So now we can see what we've got here. All right. And if we've got any soggy roots, see how they're just falling apart there? They're all dead roots. They're gone. That's now the outer part is the sponge where it absorbs the moisture. So that is the root itself there inside. It's the outer part that does all the work for you, or absorbing all the nutrients. So when you water an orchid, you can either sit it in, you know, in a bucket of water for a few seconds and then take it straight out and let it drain away. That's all it needs. It doesn't need to be sitting in a, in a tub of water or sitting with a saucer underneath it. Otherwise, it'll just rot out completely. Now, from here, we can keep cleaning off these roots, take off any long ones that we don't like. And if you have got some seriously damaged roots, hydrated lime, dunk it in. Hydrated lime, well in my case I'm using CGWS, sealing off all the cuts on the end there. So you can, that's all you need to do with that. Basically seal it off, put it aside, and while that's resting and drying out, now we can get our cardboard box. Put our bark in here. A little bit of blood and bone. A little bit of black grit, like that and a little bit of wood ash. Yep. There we are, straight from the fireplace. Mix it all up together. If you've got some palletized manure, like chicken manure or something like that, that's great too. So see how I've coated all the, all the bark with all those wonderful nutrients? That's all you need to do. Now, I've destroyed this pot, and you need a pot to be about a third in size larger. That's way too big. So we're going to go down to a seven inch pot or a six inch pot, which I should have somewhere. Give me a second, I'll be back. <laughs> Bugger, <laughs> I forgot I had orchids over here. <laughs> Look at this. Oh, here I am, I thought I had a couple of orchids sitting at the back of the property. Look what I come across here. Oh, this is what happens, you're losing your mind here. Spikes everywhere, look at that. They're spiking up on their own. I have not watered these once. You can tell that. Look at the weeds growing at them. All right, folks, well, I've got to clean these up. But for now, let's go and find a pot. All right, found an old pot here. It's a squat pot, which is actually pretty good for orchids too. So we put a little bit of bark at the bottom, not too much. And we always sit it to the one side. And that ensures us that we give a good drainage. I like to put a little bit of bark in there like that. Just like that there. And then, Fill the rest of it up. And firm it down properly so it doesn't wobble because they do become very loose. If you have got an orchid that's got streaks in it, separate it from all the other orchids. If you've got any black streaks on those leaves and things like that, you notice that it's discolouring and really starting to look a little bit sickly. Separate it because it can spread quite easily and it's spread by splashing water around. So when you do water your orchids, avoid spraying it with a hose all over the foliage and wetting everything at once. Now these are sitting out there in the rain, that's why they're getting wet all over the place, but 
you know, with the water from a tap, you know, all those chemicals that they put in there, those preservatives and additives just to keep it clean, does affect our plants as well. These are back bulbs, helps the orchid breathe. These are the new growth. There's our spike. There's our nice little potted orchid. Sitting a little bit crooked, but that's okay because it will settle down and sh shape itself up. Now, you can remove some of the back bulbs if you like as well. You know, just snap them off or cut them off. I'm not really fussed about that too much. I'm happy with what I've got there. I've got two, three good bulbs there going on, almost four, and three or four back ones there so I don't sit there doing my sums on that I just separate them so they can grow properly if they look a little bit bad I cut them off if they look good I leave them and I'm happy with this one a little bit thin in a leaf unfortunately because it's been neglected but as I said cut the tips off there's one there's the other one there's this one here like that and then give it a good liquid feed and position it where it gets plenty of morning sunlight protection from the afternoon weather and away from direct rain and that's what I've got to do with the rest of those take them away from under those trees and put them under the veranda and don't forget your liquid gold and eco boost to give them an opportunity to grow stronger healthier roots and bigger leaves and obviously bigger beautiful flowers for everyone to enjoy for more information and things like this go to our website vasilisgarden.com from me Vasili but Essie all right the stuff you don't see behind the scenes eh <laughs> take it two away <laughs> There we are. Wondering what's happened to the rest of the plane? Well, here they are. I was separating them after the camera stopped rolling. One, two, we've got a couple of back bulbs. Take them off there because they're too dark. See how they're gone? Completely gone. You can probably take these ones off too. And that one there, that's it. Two, three, that's still good. Four, so I've got four plants out of one pot. And maybe a couple more flowers if I haven't killed them yet. <laughs> My mercy.